I, 33 female, am slowly building resentful feelings towards my fiancé, 41 male. Don't know how to cope or fix this. I want to try and make this short and simple by not going into too much detail on individual causes. I'm more so looking for constructive ways on how to elevate some of these feelings of resentment. I've been with my fiancé going on four years now. We plan to be married late this year. My fiancé, Ryan, and I, have always had a very easygoing relationship with very minimal conflict, if any at all. We have always seemed to move at the same wavelength, which has made it easier for us to progress into a future together. Sure, we occasionally have our little spats of disagreements from time to time, but we have always been quick to resolve them before they become more than what they actually are. Everything has been so easy, until I've realized that I am the one making things a little too easy for him in our relationship. Since we started our relationship, I've always felt the need to meet him halfway. Whether that's financially, support, communication, values, expectations, compassion, love, etc. always halfway and in most times, further. I love him and I want to share slash give what I have as it's no longer about me, but about us now. However, as we get closer to our wedding date, I've been struggling with these overwhelming feelings that maybe Ryan isn't meeting me halfway in our relationship like I thought. I can't help but feel that my strive to be this great partner to him in our relationship, is only making it easier for him to tend to only his wants and needs and not really consider me at all in general. Here's one example, my parents are paying for a good portion of our wedding, but any upgrades or extras that we want, we have to financially come up with a difference. That's fine, both Ryan and I agreed that I would use my own personal savings for the upgrades and extras that we want, and that he would take care of. Any out-of-pocket honeymoon funds that we need to have a nice much-needed couples get away, haven't had one in two years. So I've just dropped all of my savings into our wedding, that we both want, and he goes out and finances a brand new truck with multiple expensive upgrades with plans on doing more. Well that's fine and dandy and all, but when it comes to talk about our honeymoon, he's finding every which way to financially cut corners on what is already an inexpensive hometown honeymoon getaway. It has now gone from a five-day trip, to a two-day as cheap as you can get it, just to say you had a honeymoon. He suddenly feels that we don't need to blow money on a honeymoon when we are already throwing all this money into a one-day wedding event. I can understand why it would be easy for him to justify that, as this will be his second wedding and he didn't have to contribute a dime to our wedding per our agreement. The way I see it, the reality of his justification is not the fact that he actually feels this way about the finances of a honeymoon, but their mere fact that his expensive truck splurging, really put a financial burden on our agreement. It hurts my feelings to sit there and listen to him try and not just finagle a justification to no longer have a nice honeymoon, but for him to be dishonest in not being able to provide something nice, that we both have wanted and needed for so long, because he choose to only think about himself and his wants instead. This is just one big thing out of many little incidents such as this, that has really got me wondering about whether or not I'm making the best choice. Have I made things too easy for him? Does he or will he consider me like I thought he was or will? Or am I selfish? I know that I need to talk to him, but I fear that he won't reciprocate consideration. Husband thinks I'm cheating. I'm not. My, 40 female, husband, 47 male, together 11 years, married for 8 years, has convinced himself, that I'm cheating. The thing is that I'm not and never have. His proof is absolutely bonkers. Dirty laundry triggers him. Like he thinks any kind of stain or wet spot on dirty clothes is where I slept with someone else and that person cleaned themselves up. Except that's completely irrational because for this to have happened, my husband would have had to have been home at the time this supposedly happened. He's convinced that the neighbor is watching the house waiting on him to leave. He's cycled through thinking this about four different houses, including one with that belongs to a single mother with two daughters and one that belongs to a couple in their 80s. He thinks that I have someone in my car with me on the way and from work. A couple of months ago, I hit a low-lying branch and he thought that it was a car door slamming, i.e. me dropping someone off. Even showing him the dashcam footage of my hitting the branch and then listening to himself flip out didn't convince him. On my end, I don't go out by myself. I can account for every minute of my day. I go to work and I come home. I leave and arrive at the same time every day, which he has also cited as proof before because no one is that consistent. At this point I feel like a prisoner in my own home because going in the front yard or getting the mail is me obviously putting on a show for the neighbor so I try not to go out more than necessary. I have stopped suggesting going out in public because he always accuses me of looking around like I'm looking for someone. It's exhausting. I suspect that this is a side effect of a medication that he's taking. This started about two years ago when he started taking it. That is also about the time that he also started collecting rocks and then started trying to convince me that the rocks fit together like puzzle pieces and made Native American statues. So, I understand that this is mental illness, but the constant accusations of infidelity have, obviously caused a lot of issues. 
He says he can't help verbalizing his thoughts, but his thoughts are mean and I get made and that leads to screaming matches. And that's affecting my kid. At this point, I'm so close to asking for a divorce, but I really do love the person he used to be and quite frankly since he hasn't held a job in three years I can't afford to maintain two households. Boundaries with friends of the opposite gender. My, 42 female, partner, 38 male, has a lot of friends and many of them are women. Until recently, I've never had an issue, in any of my relationships, with opposite gender friends. Recently though, there is this woman, that I don't know and he has only spoken of one other time, who calls him at like 9 tenths o'clock at night. She called last night as I was tending to our 8 month old who had woken up and I'm pretty sure it was her who called at 10 p.m. the other night when we were going to bed. When I asked him who it was that called, he said a friend of mine from NY. This woman lives in NY. Anyway, back to last night. I could hear him talking, and as soon as I walked back out into the living room, something felt off. I just got a weird vibe and I'm trying to figure out what to do with it. To me, he seemed nervous and was making faces like he wasn't interested in talking to her, so he quickly got off the phone. I'm trying my hardest not to read into anything and assume things that are not true. Due to some trust issues in the beginning of this relationship, I can be a bit insecure and I'm trying to not let it get the best of me. Lately, I've been working on myself and trying to figure out where my boundaries are. TLDR, here's my question. Is it reasonable for me to ask him to tell her not to call so late at night? I know I can't control who he talks to, but I guess I can still set the boundary that that is too late for random women to be calling him. I highly doubt he would appreciate some dude he doesn't know, calling me at that time of night, just to chat.